Entity Relationship Modeling. The process of developing a database system consists of three stages. In the requirements stage, interviews and observations are made. The information is used to create a data model to represent what is needed, the content, relationship, and constraints of the data. In the design stage, the data model is turned into a database design. We name tables and attributes and properties, including data constraints such as limits on data values, integrity constraints, and business rules. Finally, in the implementation stage, we construct the database and fill it with objects, data, forms, and reports. Users are trained, we write the documentation, and we install the system. The requirement stage is the focus of this presentation. Interviews and observations. It is best to interview the prospective users of the database system and those that will administer the database system. During the interviews, existing forms, reports, and queries are collected. At this point, it is good to ask if there are any needed changes to these documents. It is good to create use cases of the system, examples of how the system will be used by users. Lastly, the business rules that may constrain how the database will be used should be collected. Create the ER model. ER model is a data model created in the requirement stage is also called the Entity Relationship Model or ERD or Entity Relationship Diagram. The most important elements of the ER model are entities, attributes, identifiers, and relationships. Case study. The Alphabet Company needs a database to track employee information. When an employee is hired, they are assigned to a department. Each employee is assigned an employee ID and a manager. The HR department also needs to track the employee's name, date of birth, and hire date. Department information such as department code, name, and budget code should also be tracked. A department will have many employees, but an employee can be assigned to only one department. First, we need to identify the data that needs to be tracked. When looking for attributes, focus on identifying the nouns. All the nouns in the paragraph have an underline. Now let's go through them to see which ones qualify as fields or attributes of our entities or themes. The alphabet company is who the database is being created for, not what we are tracking. Employee information is too broad to use as a field. We need more specific values, which is what follows in the rest of the paragraph. Employee and department are our big ideas or themes that we want to track, so they are actually our entities and not the attributes. The colored nouns tell us the characteristics of attributes and employees that we want to track. Here we can see how our two entities are formed and how the attributes have been assigned to the entities. The underlined words are our identifiers, which will uniquely identify each record in that entity. Here we can see how the employee entity will take form in the diagram. Notice that the identifier or primary key is bold and underlined and beneath that are attributes. Department code will be used as a foreign key to link the employee entity with the department entity. The employee entity has a recursive relationship because managers are also employees. Thus, each employee is assigned to a manager and each manager may supervise many other employees. Here we can see the relationship between the employee's entity and the department's entity. Each employee has one department and departments have many employees. Notice again how the department code is used as a foreign key to establish the relationship. Looking at the two entities together, we can see how they form one-to-many relationships. An employee 
has one department, but a department has many relationships. An employee has one manager, but a manager may manage several employees. Let's take this a little further. Each employee is classified as either salaried or hourly. Hourly employees receive an hourly rate of pay. Salaried employees receive a yearly salary amount. Salaried employees can be assigned to projects. Projects have a definite start and end date and may have a team of salaried employees working on it. Each project is given a priority level of low, medium, high, or critical. Now let's see what needs to be tracked. Again, the underlined words indicate our nouns. The highlighted words are our characteristics or attributes that will be tracked in the database. One point to make is that salaried and hourly are actually values that will be stored in an attribute for the employees. We could replace these two terms with classification and then the values entered in that field would be salaried or hourly. Now we can determine the themes that these attributes fit in. Notice now that we have four different entities, employees, projects. Salaried and hourly are what we refer to as subtype entities of employees. Subtype entities automatically inherit the parent, the parents or supertype attributes. So we only need to place the unique attributes for each entity in the subtype. Therefore, salaried employees automatically inherit manager ID, first name, last name, birth date, hire date, etc. However, they have two unique attributes, yearly salary and project ID. We can see how hourly employees only have one unique attribute, hourly pay. And we can also see how projects becomes another entity and there is a relationship between projects and salaried employees. Now looking at the entire database, we can see how employees only needs to be sh visible one time. Employees have a relationship with departments and employees have two subtypes and one of those subtypes, salaried employees, has a relationship with projects. We hope that this presentation will help in your understanding of creating the entity relationship diagrams. The end.